Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Alex here. And by popular request, a lot of you have been asking me to test the popular JetBrains IDE, IntelliJ IDEA. And uh, I did download it. I've installed it on all these machines and we're gonna test a pretty heavy Java project called RxJava. You can find it at ReactiveX slash RxJava on GitHub. It is an open source project and it's based on reactive extensions. Pretty cool little set of extensions comes from .NET land, but now it's popular in all the other frameworks and languages, including JavaScript. Anyway, this one is for Java. And what's cool about this project is that you can build it. You can also include it in other projects. Well, it's a library, so that's what it's for, obviously. But it also comes with a pretty big set of tests. I really love a good project with lots of built-in tests. I'm a little guilty of not writing tests for all my software, but this one has a pretty complete set of tests that we can actually run. Now JetBrains, the creator of IntelliJ, has given me some licenses to give away to you folks. So uh, subscribe to the channel and in a couple of videos, I will be picking three random comments to win licenses to their software. Leave a comment down below and you're automatically entered to win. What better way to test an IDE than to run all these tests? And there's also a couple of tools we can use, a couple of diagnostic tools inside IntelliJ to help us determine what's going on and to, to compare all these machines and how the software runs on all these machines. So what machines do I have here? I got four MacBooks here. This is a MacBook Pro 16 inch with a Core i9 processor. So our only Intel machine. These three are Apple Silicon machines, starting with MacBook Air M1, MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Pro 10 core, and MacBook Pro 16 inch. Ugh, I'm tired of saying this stuff. <laughs> the specs will be down in the bottom. This one is a M1 Max chip. I cloned that repository locally to all the machines. I'm also gonna monitor the temperature of the machines and the fan speed. Right now, the only one that has fans spinning is the Intel machine, of course, at <laughs> 1700 RPM. These two MacBook Pros are pretty cool at 46 and 48 degrees, and the fans are off. And of course, the fans are off on the MacBook Air because there are no fans. This one is at 92 degrees, pretty warm. Not sure why it's so warm, because I'm not doing anything on it. So I don't know why. Then the Intel machine is at 62 degrees. So first I wanna time the opening of the software, the IDE, seeing how long that takes. And I'm gonna use a good old little timer right here to see. I'm gonna start things off right here on the Intel MacBook Pro and let's go. Okay, that was about four seconds. Let's do this one, MacBook Air. Okay, nine seconds. Now keep in mind folks that the version that I just opened is actually built for Apple Silicon, so it's slightly different. And that could account for the difference in the speed of opening the IDE itself. Let's see if my theory holds. Let's do this one right here. And this one is five seconds. And finally, the M1 Max. That one was also about five seconds. So the Intel machine actually opened up the IDE the quickest, but it's also a slightly different version of the software. If we take a look at the activity monitor, you'll see that IntelliJ is running on the Apple architecture on all these um, Apple Silicon machines. And of course on the Intel machine, it's running as an Intel process. Now let's see how long it takes to open a project. I'm gonna start from this one and go this way. So I already have RxJS project started. I've already opened it before. This is not the first time I'm opening it and therefore it's probably gonna be faster because some of the dependencies are cached. All right, here we go. And that was quick, about two and a half seconds. Let's go for this one. Okay, this one's about four seconds, MacBook Air. And this one's about three and a half seconds. And then the Intel machine. Okay, five seconds for this one. I'm gonna full screen the program and all these. And we're gonna take a look at some diagnostics now. I can go to help and then diagnostic tools. First of all, there's activity monitor here. And you can take a look at that on your own machine to see what's going on over there. Are there any bottlenecks? So let's just take a quick glance at that on all these machines and see what's going on over there. If there was some kind of process happening and it would really bog down your system and you're feeling like it's really sluggish, you can open up Activity Monitor and see if there is some kind of process that's taken up a large amount of the CPU. And as you can see here, I don't have any problems like that. My current CPU percentage by the most intense process is about 20%, except the Intel machine. Well, that one's bouncing between 20 and 60. Now it's down to 2019. So they're all about the same. So that's Activity Monitor. There is another tool here, and that's called Analyze Plugin Startup Performance. 
Now, I don't have any extra plugins besides what comes out of the box. So let's take a look at that and see how those compare on the different machines. Okay, so I've got a significant difference between these. The first one on the list is Kotlin, and that's all the silicon machines. Kotlin startup time on the Max was 477 milliseconds. On the M1 Pro, 1027 milliseconds, 886 milliseconds on the M1 and 1195 milliseconds on the Intel machine. That's the biggest cost as far as startup time from a plugin, except for the Intel machine where there's code with me and that one is taking up a second and a half. And code with me is taking up very little on the M1 machines, except for the M1 Pro. That one is just over a second and I'm not quite sure what's contributing to that. Now this is a nice little tool because if you see some bottlenecks happening here, you can disable certain plugins from starting out. Now I'm gonna run some tests that are actually part of this project. You can take a look at source and then test, and then here are all the tests. You can also take a look at Gradle, tasks, and under verification, you have the test task that you can run. And that's what we're gonna do. We're about to do that and compare all these machines. Now what's nice about doing it on this open source project is that you can do it. So you can go and grab that project. I'll leave a link to it down below in the description. Download it, open it up, and uh, run the builds yourself on your hardware, and you can compare it to the hardware I have here. So you can uh, determine whether these are machines that are worth upgrading to or not. Now, in order to start the test task, <laughs> that's hard to say, task, 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 task. Gradle W, I'm going to run clean first. It's one of the built-in tasks that I can run, and I'll do that on all these. Always start out with a clean slate. It's a good idea. And after clean runs, I'm going to run Gradle W and the test command, or the test task. Oh my gosh, you can't say that. Now, unfortunately, I don't have four hands, so I can't start these at the same time. Oh well, it'll report the time at the end. Let's go close enough. All right, now that this is running, we're about um, one minute into it. I wanna review the temperatures with you and we'll also take the surface temperatures from the bottom and the top. So right now the Intel machine is really hot. We're at 96 degrees and 4,000 RPM over there and the fans are going nuts. You can probably hear it in the microwave. Microwave, microphone. You have to excuse me, folks. I think I'm coming down with something. So um, it's not working very well up here. Plus I may be hungry. That's why I'm thinking about microwaves. As a side note, I hope I'm not getting any kind of radiation while doing all these tests over here. Probably a little bit, but I hope it's safe enough. Yep, the Intel machine is the hottest right now. The MacBook Air is at 79 degrees. Of course, no fans there. And M1 Pro is at 60. M1 Max is at 64. Both of those MacBook Pros, the fans are off. Amazing. I still can't believe that the fans are not kicking up over there. I'm sure they will. They have to by the end of this test. We'll see. So let's take some surface temperatures. From the top, we've got 35 on the M1 Max, 34 on the M1 Pro, 43 on the M1, and 46 on the Intel machine. Let's get the bottom temperature because that's where your lap is, right? Yeah, 46 over there, 45 on the M1 MacBook Air, 35 over here, and 36 on the M1 Max. And guess what, folks? Three of these machines are done and one we're still waiting for. I'm actually a little bit surprised. We're waiting for the M1 MacBook Air. The Intel machine is done at two minutes and 39 seconds. The M1 Pro machine is done at two minutes, 25 seconds. The M1 Max machine is done at two minutes and 27 seconds. And the M1 is not done yet. It's gotta be close. Okay, there we go. Three minutes and 41 seconds. This goes against what I've seen so far in my tests going with the M1 against the Intel machine. So I kind of have to do this again. Anyway, it would be good to do this a couple of times just to get an average. So I'm gonna run this one more time on all these machines. And they're off. It is getting a little warm in here. Don't do that at home, kids. <laughs> <laughs> now, this build process, while we are getting some times on it, we're not actually testing out the IDE at this time because this build process could just run in a terminal. You don't need to open up the IDE. So what would be really nice to figure out is after this test, I'm gonna run it one more time and try to use the IDE while the test is going on so that we are using the processors quite a bit and seeing if that will affect the performance of the IDE, of the usage of the IDE. And again, we have a repetition of last time, two minutes, 29 seconds on the MacBook Pro Intel variety, two minutes, 21 seconds on the MacBook Pro M1 
Pro notch variety. Two minutes, 22 seconds, a little bit slower on the M1 Max notched variety. And this one is not done yet. Our little friend M1 MacBook Air. And the fans are still off on these two new MacBook Pros. Unbelievable. Fans are going crazy over there at 5400 RPM. By the way, that software is TG Pro that I'm using to be able to tell the speed and the CPU temperatures. Link down below if you want to try it out. Okay, the MacBook Air M1 is done at 3 minutes and 22 seconds. Definitely the slowest one out of the bunch. Not something I expected to happen. So let's run this one more time. I'm going to clean and build. One, two, three, four. Okay, so since our MacBook Air was our slowest machine, I want to test the performance of uh, the IDE to see how it does. And I, I can already kind of tell that my mouse, while it's usable, the menus are a little bit sluggish. I mean, everything is usable, right? But it's just a matter of how snappy things are. And it's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, I can still use it. You can see that, that loading took a little while to load up. The contents of a folder so that was interesting let's try the m1 macbook pro pro <laughs> all right so the contents of the folders show up pretty quickly there's still a little bit of a delay to draw the icons but not bad i can navigate between the files just fine the files open pretty fast i don't see any significant delay in the way the files open so that's really nice I can navigate the software just fine. Yeah, looks good. And I have no doubt that the M1 Max will show anything less than. So it's about performing about the same way uh, that the M1 Pro Pro did. Yep, looks about right. They are very similar machines. I would expect the M1 Max to be a little bit better because it has more GPU cores. And let's check the Intel box. So I think that this software improved quite a bit overall. Opening files is a little bit more sluggish, definitely noticeable. It takes longer to expand folders too. That's quite noticeable. However, it's still very usable software, very usable IDE. And in fact, I haven't used this IDE for a long time because it used to be kind of sluggish, but now it seems like they've really tuned it quite a bit and now it's pretty fast. I'm gonna do this one more time because that <laughs> well, that was not fast enough. I was not fast enough, I should say. What I want to try now is doing a search. So I'm going to do a search and do a wildcard here. Star.java. And I just want to see how quickly things move in the search box, which is usually a good indicator of how quickly the IDE is performing. So these two are very speedy. It feels pretty good. It's good enough to use. I am curious to see how it performs against VS Code. I have a feeling VS Code is going to be much snappier, but you never know. This is actually very usable, except right now I'm having some issues on the M1 MacBook Air. Unfortunately, it's not giving me the same kind of snappiness. I expected more from the MacBook Air M1, which has been doing so well in my tests. But yeah, I can feel the sluggishness here in the search. Now the Intel machine is not as quick as the new MacBook Pros. Yeah, there is a little bit of a delay, but not as bad as the M1 MacBook Air. So that's my test of the IntelliJ IDE. I hope this was helpful to you. I'd appreciate a thumbs up if it was. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you wanna see. This was your suggestion, so thanks a lot for that. And if you like videos like this one, do consider subscribing. Also, don't forget about the raffle. I'm gonna be picking a comment from the list of comments down below. I'm actually gonna pick three people to win three licenses. So don't forget to write a comment down below and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.